Okay, so a few uh, questions all about kinematics. This is for standard level IB mathematics. Um, so let's just have a look at a couple of the, the key kind of definitions. Um, it's probably helpful just to remember which way around things are going. Uh, if you have a distance time graph, you can kind of see from the sketch, if you find the gradient of a distance time graph, you're going to get the velocity. And if you have a velocity time graph, if you remember from GCSE, uh, you probably learned that the area under a velocity time graph gives distance travelled. Uh, therefore, the integral of the velocity is going to give you distance. Um, so that's a kind of a helpful way to remember things. And basically, you need to know this. So, so distance, we normally use with an S. If we differentiate, it gives velocity, which you normally say is with a V. And if we differentiate again, get acceleration. And then if we go the opposite way, acceleration, integrate to get velocity, integrate again to get distance. Okay, so let's have a look at uh, okay, uh, a couple of questions in a second. Just two other kind of little things that are useful. Uh, total distance travelled is where we integrate the, uh, the absolute or the modulus of velocity. Um, uh, if you understand what's happening there, you've got a velocity graph here. Um, if you absolute basically the absolute of that graph basically turns any of the negative parts positive so therefore you kind of count the total area so it basically finds the total area under a graph uh, and also this this term for displacement um, in terms of the IB's definition uh, they use it as meaning kind of distance from a, like a given starting point so the displacement would be from that starting point uh, until whenever. So displacement at A would be the integral from 0 to A of the velocity. Okay, so let's have a look. Um, first one would be a non-calculator question. Uh, most of the rest are going to be calculator. So here we go. We're given velocity. We're given an expression for velocity. For, for velocity. Um, we're asked to find uh, basically displacement and then we're also given some kind of initial conditions so we can find C. Okay, so we start by actually just writing down that we know that the integral of velocity is going to give us the, the distance and therefore that's what we're going to try and do. That's probably worth one mark just for doing that. Uh, hopefully if we remember our integration, uh, e to the minus 2t is going to integrate to minus 1 over 2e to the minus 2t. The reason is because if we differentiate this function, bring the chain rule so the minus 2 gets brought down, we're going to get back to this function here. Okay, so you need to know your integration rules. Uh, 12t goes to 12t squared over 2. Then don't forget the plus c. Uh, that's what we're about to find out. Uh, then we're given this boundary condition when s is 2, uh, t is 0. Uh, so I can basically stick in s is 2, t is 0. If I s solve all that, hopefully I'm going to get... C in this case is 2.5. This is just going to give you minus a half. So therefore C is 2.5. And then I just write down the final answer. So S is minus a half e to the minus 2t plus, I've just simplified that to 6t squared plus C, which is 2.5. Okay, so that's an example of a non calculated question. Um, more recently, they've been asking kind of calculated questions on this. So let's have a look at a few of those ones. Uh, here we go. So they've given you some really horrible function. They've actually made it so you can't integrate and differentiate it. So it's, it's only possible to do this on your calculator. This is the, the, the thing that causes quite a few problems. Um, if you try and do this question and your calculator is in degrees, uh, everything is going to go wrong. Um, because whenever we're using calculus, and certainly whenever, we, well, definitely when we've got trig involved in calculus, uh, we have to be in radians. So if you're in degrees, you're losing lots and lots of marks. So very, very important. Make sure you're in radians for this question. Um, find the initial velocity. Well, I'm just going to basically plot this graph. Uh, initial velocity, well, I've got the velocity time graph. So initial velocity is when uh, t is 0. So I t is 0. Uh, find where this point is on my graph. I should get 17, and it's technically 17 meters per second. Um, 2b, find the maximum speed. Again, they've started asking this as well. So velocity um, would have a direction, whereas speed doesn't have a direction. So in this case here, the velocity is positive, so it's in one direction. The velocity is negative, it's, it's, it's in another direction. But speed 
it doesn't matter. So in the maximum speed, you know, actually this point here is the maximum speed um, rather than this point here. Okay, so I'm just looking for the um, the maximum of, if you want to think of it like this, the 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 absolute of the velocity graph. So I'm looking for either the like this point or this point. This point is is further away from the x-axis, so therefore this is the maximum speed. Therefore, I find this on my calculator, 24.7 uh, meters per second. Okay, next one. Um, it says write down uh, the number of times that acceleration is zero. When it says write down, they're basically saying that it should be an easy answer. Um, so we know that acceleration um, is the gradient of the velocity graph. So basically what we're actually thinking of is um, how many times is the gradient of the velocity graph zero? So the gradient of the velocity graph is acceleration. Well, the gradient of the velocity graph is zero there and there and there. So therefore, the acceleration is zero three times. So the gradient of the velocity graph is zero three times. Okay, next one, find the acceleration of P when it changes direction. Okay, when it, it changes direction when the velocity graph crosses the x-axis. So it's basically going from positive velocity to negative velocity. Okay, so what that actually means is a change of direction. Um, so I basically need to find out what this point is here. So when it crosses the x-axis, or the t-axis, I get 0.863851. I keep all the numbers for now. Uh, and then I can actually just use this on my calculator. We don't often do differentiation just on the calculator, but it, but it can be done. So hopefully whichever calculator you've got, you should be able to work out how to do this. We just type this into our calculator. We just say we're going to differentiate this function at this point, and the calculator gives us the answer, which in this case is minus 9.25 meters per second squared. Uh, it's one of those things that, because we don't use it that often, students don't always know uh, which buttons to press. But yeah, make sure you can do that. Okay, so we get, that's the acceleration. Uh, total distance travelled. Uh, okay, this is where we're using our definition. Total distance travelled, we're basically finding the absolute of the velocity time graph. And it's in the first, if we go back to the initial question, it's in the first seven seconds. So that's why I'm going from zero to seven. Stick it on your calculator again, so put the absolute sign in here. There's your function between 0 and 7, and then 63.9 meters. So all of this is really just knowing how to use your calculator correctly. Okay, next question. Um, we've got another particle starting at a fixed point A. Um, we're given what Vt is. Uh, here's our graph. Um, it says the maximum distance of the particle A during the times 0 to 5 and justify your answer. So if we don't justify your answer, we're not going to get full marks in this one. Um, that was in meters, that was in seconds. Um, I'm going to start by thinking about this. Um, basically, it's going to change direction when the, the velocity graph is zero. So it's basically going to change direction here. So one way to think about this is all this bit underneath the axis, it's moved away from a starting point. When it changes direction, because it's moving in a horizontal line, it's going back towards the starting point again. So actually, let's just work out the total area between north and 2. So if we integrate from north to 2, we find that the total distance, in this case here, you know, think of it to the left, for example, is minus 2.28 meters. And that's how far it's away from the starting point. And then let's actually see, well, let's integrate the whole function from north to 5. So if we integrate from north to 5, again, it's going to tell me this is going to be the distance from the starting point. So it, uh, for the, in, after the first five seconds, it's now 1.56 from the starting point. Um, so the maximum distance like away from the starting point is going to be that 2.28 meters. You know, if, again, you can think of it like this. It, you know, it, it traveled, for example, to the left by 2.28 meters, and then it kind of turned around, went back to the start again, and then traveled to the right by 1.56 meters. Well, the furthest away it was ever from the starting point was 2.28 meters. Okay, so next question. Um, displacement of P from O after five seconds. Um, again, we've got some horrible function here. Um, 
Okay, so if we want displacement, okay, so we think well, we're going to integrate the velocity function. That's going to give us some kind of distance. Um, so if we integrate from 0 to 5, that function here, again, make sure we're in radians, it's going to give us a distance from that starting point. Okay, so from 0 to 5 of that gives us that we're minus 3.71591 meters from that starting point. Um, and then we've got to think a little bit carefully. If you think of it like this, um, we started off at point P and it told us that we were 4 meters from O. So that's, what, that's 4 meters from O. And we've basically just shown that we've traveled back 3.71591 meters. So therefore the distance from O is now going to be 0.284 meters. Okay, so we started at point P, which was 4 meters away. We then travel 3.71591 meters, so as in we're getting closer and closer to O. So therefore, at this point here, we're now 0.284 meters from O. Okay, so next one, find when P is first at rest. Um, so we've got the velocity graph. Okay, so when we're at rest, the velocity is zero. Therefore, T is 0.18 zero seconds okay, so that's when we're first at rest the velocity at uh, the velocity graph at this point here is zero um, the number of times that P changes direction okay so it changes direction when it crosses the axis so that's one time and that's the second time so therefore it's going to cross um, it's going to cross the x-axis once there and once there so that crosses two times. Okay, and then next next one, find the acceleration of P after three seconds. Um, so three seconds, again, basically just using the fact that if I differentiate the velocity, I get the acceleration. Um, and then here we go, so this is a velocity function. Again, this is where I can just use my calculator. So I just uh, basically can, put all this into my calculator so if it's going to tell me the, the gradient at a point so there's a function that's when t is equal to 3 okay let my calculator do the work and therefore I get an answer of 0.744 and that's meters per second squared okay and then the next question uh, it says find the maximum speed of p okay so maximum speed it's the same as last one um, the maximum speed, well, it's either going to be this point here or it's going to be this point here. So I can basically find them. I basically want to find when the absolute of the velocity graph is the greatest. And I think it actually turns out that it's at this point here. So therefore, the speed uh, is going to be 3.28 meters per second. I'm not going to put the negative. It's going to be just because speed will just have the... Uh, yeah, just the positive answer. So 3.28 meters per second. Okay, and then let's just look at one last question. Um, this is, again, a slightly confusing one. We've got two people that are traveling from Buenos Aires uh, to somewhere else, uh, I guess in Argentina. Um, first off, we've got Ramiro, and we're given some kind of velocity function. And then we've got Lotoro, um, and we're given the displacement function. Um, and we're told that they basically start at the same point. Okay, so that's the kind of the, the problem that we're given. So let's start with the first bit. So Latoro, basically we know when t is zero. So let's actually find out where where this chap is when t is zero. So we we put t is zero into our displacement uh, function, and therefore when t is zero, he is sixty meters from Buenos Aires okay so there we know so we know that the initial distance that's where he is starting from and actually that's also where Ramiro is starting from because they start at the same place so they're starting 60 meters from Buenos Aires okay and then we go right let's now work out the integral of the velocity function because that's going to give me displacement um, and I'm, I'm saying well I'm starting at t is 0 and I want the displacement when t is 10 so let's start off by doing that from 0 to 10 so I integrate this function, so 40 goes to 40t minus t squared goes to minus t cubed over 3 from 0 to 10. Stick those in, 
and I get 66.6 .6 meters, 66.6 .6 recurring meters from the starting point. Okay, so that's that's where Ramiro is from the starting point. But then the question was asking distance from Buenos, the displacement from Buenos Aires. Well, he was 66.66 .66 recurring meters from the starting point, but he was 60 meters from Buenos Aires at that starting point. Therefore, his total distance from Buenos Aires is 126.6 recurring meters. Again, if you want to kind of think of it like this, there was Buenos Aires. They started here, it was 60 meters away, and then he traveled another 66.6 .6 recurring meters. 66.6 recurring meters, and therefore the total distance from Buenos Aires was 126.6 recurring meters.